All right, so what we have here is the model of a piglin that I created based on some work done by SkyAO, a user on Twitter that is the art director for Nox Crew, which is a Minecraft marketplace team. Um, after seeing their models for, uh, I think they called the project Warpick or something like that um, on Twitter, it just really inspired me to try and make something and then 3D print it. And so I'll include a link to their Twitter profile in the description if you'd like to check them out, give them a follow, give them some support, um, make some really awesome stuff. So basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking this model out of Blockbench and bringing it into Blender to make it ready to print. So the biggest issue we have right now is that we have a bunch of flat faces and 3D printers don't really like things that have zero depth. You can see once we select it, it's got zero in size. Um, 3D printers really don't like that. They, they will try and print it, uh, but it won't be as good. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is that these are cubes. And so when a 3D printer is looking at the data you give it in the form of an STL file or a G code file or whatever you're using, it's not going to see this texture. It's going to see a cube and so, or a square rather. So it's going to print a square instead of your tattered flag design we see here. So problem one, it's flat. Problem two, it's a cube. And so we're going to set out to fix that in this video. So there's a couple of things that I'm going to point out right here. This is, well, it looks like a plane. It is technically a cube with zero depth. Uh, that means that all of these, these sides all exist. So this east is applied for. This west is also applied here. And then all of these other UV sides are hidden. While they're hidden, that doesn't mean they don't exist. They still exist, they're just hiding. So we're gonna have to find a way to get rid of these once we pull it into Blender. Hopefully it's not gonna be too difficult. Blender's got some, some uh, easy fixes for things like that. So we're gonna be doing things to the flag, the two tusks here, and the two chunks of grass we have on this base plate. So first thing we're gonna do, once your model is done and you're ready to uh, start working on it to be printed, we're going to go to File, Export, and Export OBJ Model. All right, now that we are in Blender, we're just gonna go ahead and delete all of these. You can select them, press the Delete key, and it should get rid of them. We're gonna go to File, import, use obj, and then find the directory that you saved your model to. All right, so looking at our piglin, it looks pretty much exactly the same. There's a little bit of Z fighting here, that sort of screen door effect, that's not a big deal. You may see that in a couple of other places, don't worry about it. We're gonna change our viewport display to shading, and then we're gonna do some things to make it easier to see. So you can select any part of your model, just select my base. We're going to go to texture, press this little arrow for the drop down under base color, change it from linear to closest. What that does is it preserves the pixels and just sort of gives it the view you're looking for. All right, so we're going to start with a couple of things for setup before we actually touch this model. You're going to select something and press tab, then go to options. You'll select auto merge and change your threshold to 0 0.01 and hit enter. So what we just did there is we just turned on auto merging for vertices. Now what we're gonna do with that is use that method to convert these what look like planes into real planes because right now it's just a cube which is what's creating that screen door effect. So um, here's how we're gonna fix that. Uh, we'll need to select our snapping to vertex instead of increment. You can navigate away from that. Then you'll want to select one of your vertices, doesn't matter which one, press G for moving, and you'll see you get that weird funky screen door effect. Then hold down the control key until it snaps to this vertice, and then click. So what that did is it merged the two vertices. You can confirm that by pressing G again, and it should move that whole corner. So we're going to do the same thing with each corner of this. G, hold down that control, and click. G, control, click, G, control, click. 
All right. So now what we have here is an actual plane and you don't get that screen door effect anymore. So we're going to go through to our other models and we're going to do the same exact thing. We'll speed it up for the sake of time. We're going to come down to this first piece of grass, and if you have a numpad, you can hit the slash key. It will isolate that one object. The way that we're going to be cutting this up is we're going to be using something called edge loops. So go ahead and press tab, get into edit mode. You can use control R. I think there might be something here that says edge loop. Maybe not. Just do control R. It's pretty easy to remember, um, and you'll just want to hover around this model until you see a yellow line. There's one for each axis. Now, once you see a yellow line appear, stop moving your mouse and scroll up on your scroll wheel. You can increase the number of lines. You just want to do it till it lines up perfectly with your pixels. So you'll left click to select and then right click to apply. And when you right click, it will default this back to the snap position. So if you've accidentally moved your mouse and you're way over here and you're worried about having to do it over again, just hit right click it'll snap back to the regular spot. Now if you don't have a mouse scroller, you can uh, basically do the same thing. You control R and just left click and right click. So with that singular line there, you might think you're in kind of a tricky position. Without clicking away, there's this little loop cut and slide menu down here. Just increase this number of cuts until it matches what you're looking for and leave it at that. All right, so now you've cut it up into the sizes that you need it. Go up to face select right here, and you can use whatever select you want, but I prefer the circle select. And then you basically just come through here. You can hold down shift with your left click to expand on that. Then once you've got it all, press delete and do faces. All right, so now this one object is good to go. To get out of that isolate mode, just hit that slash button again on your keyboard and we'll speed up this process for the rest of it again for the sake of time. All right, so now we are up to the flag. Now the flag is gonna be a little bit different um, because we're gonna to need to do something to it uh, before we cut up this portion. We need to combine these three elements into one. So you're going to select all three of them, right click and do join. So now it is all one element when you select it. So you can hit tab to go to edit mode. Uh, but there are a couple of things you need to check before you start cutting into this thing. You need to select your vertices and you can go back to the regular select box and you need to move one of these around. Now you can see the issue that we're having here is that these aren't uh, it, they're all in one item, but it's still three separate faces. So we need to have this as one face with cuts at each corner. The way we do that is we do the same thing we did before. You just hit G to move it and do control and it should auto snap. We can check that right here. Awesome. So now we just need to do the same thing to the rest of these corners. There's just four of them, so it's not too difficult. All right. So now when we move this, they should all be aligned and snapped. Cool. All right, so now we're going to go through and do our loop cuts as we did before. And this one's a little bit bigger, but it's the same process as before. All right, so now that all of our faces are cut out, we're going to go to the last thing, which is solidifying each of these guys. This can be done easily by using modifiers. So what we'll do is we'll select one object, Go to the modifier tab and you're going to want to go down to solidify. Now with solidify, first thing, going from top to bottom, change your mode to complex, change your thickness to 0 0.025. You can go bigger if you want to, but this is what I found works for me and still sort of holds that flat plane feel to it. Then change your offset to zero. 
This basically means it's going to be extruding from the center and solidifying from the center of the object, not, uh, not changing from one side to another. Easy way to check this is to come over to this little box of the computer monitor and click it on and off. If it looks like it's expanding from the center, you've done it properly. All right, next thing we're going to do, we want to apply this to everything that we've just made. So we're going to select every flat surface that we've just adjusted, holding down our shift key and clicking to select. And then the last one we'll select is this solidified one. So you select it, you do control L for link and then do copy modifiers. What you should see is now this is solidified, this is solidified, and the flag should be solidified as well. You know you've done your linking on the corners properly if you have diagonal lines here. Don't worry about this screen door effect uh, that doesn't transfer over to the print. It works just fine. So with your modifiers, you now need to apply them. So you just come over here, press apply all, You'll need to do this individually with your models. Just select it, go to apply all, and that makes sure it is a 3D model. Quick way to check it, go into your tab and see if it has depth. Yep, it has depth. If it doesn't uh, have depth, it would show up as just a plane with these chunky things on it. So at this point, you are ready to export to STL and then bring into your 3D slicing tool of choice. So go to export, STL, save it where you want to save it, and you should be good to go for printing. All right, so this is just some video clip of the model printing in progress. You can see just going a little layer by layer. There are a couple of issues with it. As you can see here, a little bit of spooling up at the bottom, not that big of a deal. So this is the end result. Unfortunately, uh, after trying to get a better picture, I dropped the model and broke the flag so it should be known that um, going with that thickness for some larger pieces uh, is a bit fragile so you may want to reinforce that and make it a little bit thicker but hopefully this video was helpful and you enjoyed it feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions thanks for watching